my name is Dean. Welcome to today's YouTube video. Glad you could join me today. Now, first off, before we get into today's video, I want to say that if you are a subscriber of mine, or if you have just peeked down my YouTube channel, you may notice something about the last time that I posted. It's been quite some time. It's been a hot minute. If you're wondering why I've been gone for so long, there are two main reasons as to why. Uh, first one is just I moved. It was a pretty big move. It was at the beginning of COVID and then just life and school in general. A lot happened. Had to put YouTube on the back burner. Second reason is this project. I, if one thing you should know about me is that when it comes to creating things and making things, I am very overly ambitious and I very much underestimated how long this project was going to take. I started it back in December thinking that this was only going to take a month. Um, 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 over six months now since I started it and only now have I finished it. So, you know, that wasn't the best comeback video to choose, but whatever. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. Very glad to be back and making videos for you guys. So, the main idea for today's video is painting and embroidering a denim jacket. I have been wanting to do this for the longest time. But I've always put it off just because I've been so scared of messing up and then now having what otherwise would have been a perfectly fine piece of clothing sitting in my closet collecting dust because I just, I'm assuming I probably wouldn't end up wearing it if I messed it up, you know. Now I sucked up the fear, gained a little bit of self-confidence, and now we're here. Um, <laughs> so this is the denim jacket that we're going to be painting today. Nothing too special about it, it's just a plain black denim jacket. I think I got it from TJ Maxx, but yeah, we are going to spice it up today, throw a little bit of paint on there, some embroidery, and hopefully make it look cool. Hopefully. Now in prep for this video, I very much struggled with trying to come up with an original idea of what I wanted to do in the jacket. Felt like a lot of pressure. So <laughs> I turned to the handy dandy Pinterest and I found this image. If you don't know what it is, it is Haku in his dragon form from the movie Spirited Away. If you haven't seen that movie, highly recommend. Very good movie. After I found that image on Pinterest, I went on to procreate and made this to kind of get a general feel vibe for what I want the jacket to look like. Now another portion to this video that I want to add on was showing you guys my process of embroidering. I've gotten some people asking me like how do I embroider and like things that I do. So. That's also in this video if you're interested in that. So yeah, with that said, without further ado, here is the video. Ooh, I'm nervous. I'm scared to lay down the first bits of paint. What if I just did clouds? Well, let's just leave it at the clouds. I'm happy with clouds. <laughs>
before we move on to the final jacket reveal, I want to quickly share with you guys my process and tips for embroidering. First things first, your materials. You're going to need an embroidery hoop, a needle, scissors, thread, whatever fabric and or article of clothing you want to embroider on, and optional, a fabric pencil or marker to sketch out your design. You don't really need it, you could freehand it, Personally, I don't trust myself to freehand, so... <laughs> now for thread, personally for me, I have only ever used DMC thread. I kind of think of it as the quote-unquote like industry standard. I know a ton of embroiderers use it. It's a very nice, high-quality thread, and they have a ton of color options that are very fun to browse through at Michael's. My first tip is to split your thread. If I'm not mistaken, all DMC threads are six-strand threads. For me personally, I only like to use four or three. I have found that in doing this, it kind of helps your embroidery look a little bit less bulky. Again, preference, play around with what you like, get a feel for how you like your embroidery to look. Now that you have all your materials prepped, let's talk about stitches. So I mainly used four different stitches throughout all of my embroidery. The first stitch being shown is a simple back stitch. Now, similar to the classic running stitch, which creates a dotted line effect, the back stitch creates one continuous line. This is done by making your first stitch, and then on your next stitch, instead of moving forward, you go back into the hole of your last stitch. Hopefully, that makes sense. If not, hopefully the visual aid does. <laughs> now, the second stitch we are going to talk about, I don't quite know the name of, but I always pair it with my back stitches. And essentially what you're going to do is loop your thread through the stitches of your back stitch. Here in this clip, I use a different color. Generally, you would want to use the same color as your thread, unless you want to do that kind of candy cane striped effect. You do you, boo. What this stitch does is just help make your lines look smoother instead of just looking like a bunch of dotted stitches, if that makes sense. The next stitch is a satin stitch. Satin stitches are generally used for filling in your embroidery shapes. This is done by placing one stitch right next to another. One tip that I have for satin stitches is to not make your stitches too long. This is a very useful tip, especially when you are embroidering on clothes, because when you wear clothes, usually the fabric will like fold and buckle, and that can also cause the long threads to end up warping and like protruding in different ways. So, it's always best to keep your satin stitches to a short length. Now, you may be wondering, Dean, what if I have a large embroidery and I need to fill it in? How do I do that without making my satin stitches too long? To answer that, we come to our next and final stitch, the long short stitch, or short long stitch, whatever you want to call it. Similar to the satin stitch, you're going to be making stitches right next to one another, but you're going to vary the lengths of the stitches, as shown. This stitch is perfect for large shapes, as you can break those large shapes into different sections without making your stitches too long. This is also very helpful if you want to play around with different gradients. Instead of using the same colored thread, you could use different threads of different shades and hues and stuff and create like a nice blending effect. The last thing I want to show you guys is how I end my embroidery. What you are going to do is split your thread in half, then thread one of those split threads into your needle, then thread it through an adjacent stitch, and then you're going to use those two split threads and then tie a knot. I love this method of ending my embroidery. It's so easy and it's very secure. Okay, so that's pretty much it for all of my embroidery tips and process. Now, on to the final jacket reveal.
Okay, so that's the jacket. I hope you guys like it. I know, I know, I did a good job. Um, <laughs> for though, it turned out way better than I thought it would. This was the biggest embroidery project that I have ever done. And again, I was very ambitious. And towards the middle, I was kind of getting scared about how it would look and like whether it was going to be worth my time. But I think it was pretty worth it. I counted how many hairs were on the jacket and there are around 110 hairs individually embroidered on there. Like the little like hair like section strands, if you get it. But yeah, I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, I really hope that I can start posting again more. Not making any promises for consistency, just because I don't want to let you down. But just know that I'm trying. Um, <laughs> for the meantime, you can follow all my other social medias that I am far more active on. And maybe even subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified for every time that I post. On top of that, maybe leave a like and a comment um, and all the other YouTube stuff. Again. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for being here and existing and watching this. Um, I love y'all. Hope you have an amazing day. And until next time, bye.